Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to uh, my lovely little cybersecurity show. Hopefully, you guys are having a great day. I'm having a great day because today we're going to have uh, some fun. We are going to work our way through a CTF, a vulnerable machine that I found on VulnHub. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Really cool stuff today because this machine, ADMX 1.0.1, found here at VulnHub, um, is a really interesting box because it says right here in the description and I guess it's Adam ADMX is an easy medium machine built for OSCP aspirants. So aspirants, aspirants, I believe that's how it sounds like aspirants, but <laughs> if you aspire to the OSCP, they've built this machine just for you. So, um, it seemed interesting to me. So I downloaded, I played around with it. I worked my way through it. And I thought, man, this was actually a pretty fun box very straightforward couple little little twists and turns i found in there but i thought it would be cool for us to go through it and uh, kind of show you what i did and how i how i made my way from start to finish maybe you pick up a trick or two right if you're going for your oscp maybe this could be some relevant information for you out there right so it was a lot of fun for me so i thought hey i'd pass that along give a shout out to uh, old death flash 1411 uh, on twitter there so for making a cool box and putting it on vol hub thank you so much so there it is uh make sure you can get that download no real uh, awesome screenshots to speak of but um there's your download links right there grab those install and fire away now let's see here let's get back into the business of hacking stuff i'm gonna move this over to that desktop because we'll probably need that later i want to show you a couple of things i saw that I had to actually look up. That I was like, I know what I want to do, but I know how to do it. So we'll 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 get back to that in a little bit. So I've already made a uh, a file here, or a folder. I'm sorry, and I've already scanned for all the ports because hey, that doesn't you know that's not fun to watch. Uh, so I can just cat that file out for you. Nmap, Nmap all ports, and it only came back with one port open. Bam, port 80. Looks like we're going web app surfing, right? So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna I start attacking this web app. So now just my personal methodology, what I typically do when I see this is I start running for directory fuzzing and I start running Nick to looking for vulnerabilities in the application itself. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start there. So first thing I'm going to hammer down with is actually what I like to do here is I will split my screen, kind of get this top bottom approach thing going on here. There we go. And what I'll do is I'll run like GoBuster in the top and I'll run Nick2 in the bottom. So GoBuster is gonna run, let's see here, I'm gonna run it in directory mode and then I wanna do dash u for the URL, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash and the IP was 192.168.0.20, I believe. And uh, yeah, then we do a dash w because I wanna feed it a word list. Let's see your user dash share word list and feel free to use whatever word list you like i went with uh durbuster and the directory dash media or is it 2.3 medium there you go so there you go it's the directory dash list dash 2.3 dash medium dot text that's the one i used and it was fruitful it came back with some good stuff. We're going to see that here in just a second. Next thing I typically do is a dash X for file extensions. Like what extensions do I want it to look for? Because you never know what might pop up. So I do some of the run of the mill things like TXT and they're just comma separated. So just comma separate them out. TXT, PHP, uh, tar.back. Um, I don't look for HTML usually. GZ. Um, look for like zip. That kind of stuff. Um, sometimes I'll do it for like JPEG, JPG, PNGs, anything that might be interesting of me. Um, what's the um, PDF is another good one to look for. This could bring back something awesome. So there we go. A couple of file extensions I'll throw at it. And then we want to output that stuff because I always like to save everything that I do because I'll probably need to reference it later. And I don't want us to be scrolling through the infinite regress that is your scroll bar, right? So I'm gonna do a dash O for output and I'm gonna output to gobuster.txt. That's my standard, I'm using port 80, no frills, no nothing. It's it's the standard area. I just do gobuster.txt. 
All right, fire that off. It's already cranking. It's doing a pretty good job. Now let's get Nikto running. Nick 2 dash h http and then 192.168.0.20. And then I'll do also a dash out to Nick 2txt Bam, there it goes. Oh, that's it's unhappy with that. What did I do wrong here? What was it mad about? Oh, unable to open database file. That's that's funny. Did Nick2 crash on me? Let's see here. What's going on here? Yeah, command not found. Crashed. What? No, I have Nick2 in this. Nick2. Let's help, right? Yeah. Weird. I think it just crashed. Odd. <laughs> that was odd. Nick2 dash h http 20 Let's try that again. And dash o to Nick2. Nick2 dash txt. Don't crash this time. There we go. Things are running as they should. All right, let's look and see where GoBuster is at. GoBuster has already found a couple of directories. Yay, I love it when that happens, right? So what's funny is we're already looking like we might be dealing with ourselves a little WordPress site. So I'm definitely going to want to check that out. We also have this tools directory that already got found. Stop doing that. There you go. Tools directory. Uh, so maybe there's something good in there, something that will give us command execution, Maybe a CGI, something or other. Who knows what's going on inside of that, right? Let's go back down to Nick2, see what it's found so far. Hasn't gotten too far along. We see there's no CGI directories found, womp womp, right? But I'm not at the end of my Nick2 journey, nor am I at the end of my GoBuster journey, honestly. I'm going to start enumerating out these directories that I've already found, and I'm going to enumerate them with Nick2 as well. So I'm going to be rerunning these tools again and again, to make sure I don't miss anything because we're going to remember when you're doing something like the OSCP, it's all about not leaving stones unturned, right? If you hear people talking about that exam, they'll typically say things like, um, this is something where you want to go enumeration, 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 figuratively tattoo it on your forehead, whatever you need to do, bury it in the brain that you don't stop. You turn over every pebble you can find because that could be the one little the little rock that gets you the cheese, right? So that's what we're looking for. All right, so it uh, looks like Nick2 is done. And not a lot coming back from that, right? Head posts, get options, normal stuff. Nothing really going on. I got to hit the, no, I don't want to do this uh, about the server headers. I don't care about that. But that's saved. Looks like GoBuster just found something else, which is server status. Not uncommon to see, and you'll notice that that status right there is 403. I keep double clicking. There we go. <laughs> 403, which means it's like uh, permissions denied, unauthorized kind of activity. So if you try to go there, it's going to give you an error. These others are 301s, which I think is a redirector. I think if that's a redirection status code, because and then I'm seeing this kind of like redirection business. So I'm only 51% through it. I'm probably increase the the amount of um, time it's going to take to finish that by adding all those extensions that probably is slowing it down just a little bit. But while we're doing that, let's run Nick2 against both the tools and the WordPress directories because we know we can get in there, right? So uh, let's rerun Nick2. Nick2, let me just clear the screen here, bring it back up. Nick2-HTTP, give it the IP address to 0.20 and then forward slash tools dash o oops uh i'll call it nick2 underscore tools dot txt that way i know that was the tools directory bam fire that off maybe we get a little extra action there right so i'm just kind of walking you through my standard methodology this is like i even though i i kind of i know where the finish line is already i don't want to deprive you good folks out there of like all the pertinent things that i did that, that got me there right so that's what it's all about it's about an exchange of information. And I've already found something interesting here. Look at that. Tools, PHP info .php. So maybe I'll learn some really good information from the PHP info page. Um, and I, I also know that there is a way to, if you can find like a local file inclusion vulnerability and you can see the PHP page, there's possibility for exploitation uh, through that avenue as well. So um, really cool stuff there. I've done that before. There's a little script you can download and it'll auto pwn that if you have those two things. But again, it's kind of re rehashing the fact that it did find this. 
probably going to see that a lot. I'm contemplating whether or not I probably won't run GoBuster against the WordPress site because if anybody's out there has well uh, worked with um, WordPress before, there's a lot to it, right? It's like a full fledged you're building a website, or I say you're building one. It's kind of a pre built website. It's like a template for building websites. So there's all this stuff there um, already. So if I start scanning for that, it's obviously going to come back with a ton of stuff. So I, I I did that in the original round, and I was starting. Of course, I was like, oh yeah, that's right. There's a lot of stuff here and it was taking forever, like forever to get through that. So I just kind of gave up on that Avenue and that is a good tip. Um, when time is of the essence, you got to know when to cut bait. You got to know when to go. You know, I think that we've spent some time on this and I'm pretty sure. I mean, maybe I'll throw it in the background and come back to it later, but I'm not really going to put my focus in on this specific region. So just got to keep that in mind as you go. Um, Nick two still running. Jeez, Luis, we're almost done with go buster. Let's go back and take a look at that there. So there you go. Go buster is 99% almost at the finish line. Wait for it and done. Right? So yes, these are the three directories that we found. I do want to run go buster again, though. Go buster dir against uh, that tools directory. So dash you, and this time I won't run all the extension stuff. Uh, we'll just see what we get. Uh, dash u http bam one two one six eight dot o dot twenty forward slash tools and then dash uh, w for the uh, the what is this thing called word lists that's what it is thanks for joining us brain glad to have you back in the show uh, user share yeah word lists we're well, not world list word lists derbuster and then it was directory uh, two point right yeah three medium and I'll just do I'll do a couple I'll do like PHP and TXT and tar whatever that sounds good right and then dash O to dir buster not dir buster what are we doing we're not doing dir buster we're doing go buster I'm using the dir buster list with go buster it's like weird cross pollination. It's like I'm creating a hybrid flower, right? So much fun. Um, this is going to be called GoBuster underscore tools dot txt. There we go. Firing it away, rocking and rolling. Maybe we find something with that for us to look at. Let's go back to Nick two. Any other thing? This does happen from time to time where Nick two just starts cranking through stuff, but it kind of takes a while. I don't know if it's my virtualization or whatever. But it's definitely taking a hot second. We're already 14% through GoBuster here. So that's good. You can see the kind of speed increased a bit when it came to uh, leaving off all those extensions. Because you got to remember, it's looking for each one of the, like every file in the word list. It's looking for that as a directory, but it's also looking for it as a file with each one of those extensions. So every extension you add is going to actually add processing time to uh, making your way through it. So, but this is running pretty quickly. This is just a waiting game at this point. Uh, now for a word from our sponsors. No, no, not a sponsor. We have a page and which is something we saw from Nick too. It's telling us that we have that PHP info page. So, you know what, while we're waiting for that, let's go check that PHP info page out and see what that looks like. So let's get into a tab here and 192.168.0.20. Booyah. You can do it. Okay, so that's just the default um, Apache 2. So, hey, good information there, right? You don't want to discount this stuff. You never know. It looks like we do have a... Uh, I'll increase that. I'll increase that. Enhance. Enhance. Oh, too much enhance. There we go. Um, we do see that it is kind of showing us that we are in var HTML. So if we had to do any kind of exploitation for the web app, we know that's where that app is probably sitting. Uh, at least it's a good bet that it is. Uh, because we're running Apache, Apache 2, and um, that is its standard place to put. But as we knew, we have that um, forward slash PHP info dot. Did I do that right? No, PH way off info dot PHP file. Uh, I thought we did. Oh, it's under tools. Der, der, der. Um, I'm a crazy person. Let's put that in there. Tools slash. There we go. All right. Now we have a PHP file. Our PHP info file. Good stuff. Booyah. Versioning. 
PHP version 7.4.3. Again, enumeration, enumer say it with me, enumeration, enumeration, like a mantra, just chant it, love it. Learn to bring it into your inner person and have it come out in hacking goodness. Anywho, back to the story. Um, let's see here. You definitely want to go through this page because you want to see what's up. A lot of good stuff in here that you might pick up. Let's see here. Anything good? Uh, server roots. We got some this. We can see our user agent that's being used. That's interesting. I, oh man, that makes me wonder. That really makes me wonder if I change my PHP or my user agent to PHP. I'm going to have to test that. I won't do that now. I'll, I'll test that and I'll let you guys know. Probably won't work, but this is a PHP page. Man, that'd be cool. Is if I'm what I'm thinking is, is if I make my user agent a PHP string, like code, PHP code, and would it run it? I don't know, but I'm thinking about it and I might try that later. But there's that uh, var HTML. I'm probably way off. It probably ain't going to work, but it's always worth a try. You get an idea, go for it, right? Um, bu -bu -bu -bu. Uh, we got that tools PHP. So there's the request URI. So a lot of interesting information there. Again, there's that user agent string showing up right here. Since I can read, I mean, I've, maybe if, the, you know, I don't know, this is an executable file. It's a PHP. I'm thinking it might execute some code. Uh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to walk away. I know how to root this thing. I'm going to show you how to get that done. And I'll play with that later. Um, let's see here. Well, you know, I, I worked my way through this file. I looked for anything good. Uh, we are running a send mail. I did look and see that we could possibly have had like a local file inclusion or a remote file inclusion because no. Yeah. Uh, local file inclusion because URL F open was on. So that's possible. I think that's the, the value that you said, or it might be the URL include. I can never remember that. Maybe it's both. I don't remember. Didn't find a local file inclusion anyway, so it didn't matter. Let's see here. Uh, um, dates, times, just generally good information for you guys to be aware of. You always want to look through this. Look for versioning. Look for settings that might lend you to the mountaintop, right? So always be sure to go through that file if you find it. Looks like we are done there. This thing is still running. Oh, I'm, I'm going to kill it. I'm just going to control C it. Cause I know it's, I know it's not going to really get any farther. There's nothing else there. And when it comes to the WordPress site, Nikto can scan WordPress and let you know versioning information and things of that nature. But typically, and let's go back to our, our page here. Let's open up another one. You'll notice I keep everything open in its own tab because you never know when you want to go back and kind of compare things or, just easily get to something one, uh, oop, one and 2.168.0.20. Booyah. And then we're at forward slash WordPress, forward slash WordPress, which should be taking us to a WordPress site, which, oh yeah, I remember this part. This was fun. This is where it got interesting. You'll notice that this is, I'm going to turn on my, my zoom function so we can kind of like, um, um, get zoomed in here. I don't want that. Don't give me this. That's what I need. Bang. Give me back here. Let's try that again. There we go. I will show you. You kind of see how this is just kind of back and forth, back and forth, waiting for something to happen, right? We're going to see why that is here in just a second here after that page actually loads. So while we wait for that, this is where I was like, what is going on with this machine? And this kind of brings us up to the idea of sometimes when you're doing this, right, you're working through CTFs, you're trying to figure out how do I get to the mountaintop on this thing? That patience can be a virtue. Like you notice that I killed out that Nick two thing. That was only because I already knew that it wasn't really going to It'll give me any kind of gold, right? It's not going to, not going to give me any treasures. I've already mined that. So I know what was there. I, I don't need you to wait for that. But when I initially ran that scan, I did wait for that. I let that go because that's a good scan to let that complete because I don't want to miss anything. I want to use the best word lists I can. I want to look for multiple file extensions that might yield some great information. The page finally loaded and you're about to see some oddities. And we're going to go down a little rabbit hole here in just a second.
But you you need to know when, like I said before, you got to know when to cut bait, but you also got to know when to say, hang in there because the juice is worth the squeeze. And that, unfortunately, a lot just comes from experience, right? So play with a lot of these like cyber ranges and CTFs and vulnerable machines as much as you can because that's going to give you that experience of knowing like, yeah, this is taking a hot minute, but you know, uh, this can't, this is not abnormal. So I'm just going to wait that out. Plus it can really give me some good information. So I don't want to miss out on something or yeah, I've been running, running something like, I don't know, like, um, uh, like a brute force against the password. And it's been like 25 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. If you're in something like, so this is specifically for OSCP, right? If you're in that exam and it's running 45 minutes for a password, it's probably not that just saying, just take that. Your mileage may vary my, my hedge and my bets there, but don't spend too much time on something that's not giving you some gold, but know when it's worth it to hang in there because there might be a nugget at the end of the rainbow, right? So that's the idea. All right, let's go back to the computer screen. You'll notice that the page is loaded, but it kind of looks like junk. Kind of looks like straight up junk, right? This is horrible. And I was like, what is this? What is, and I go, oh, I've seen this kind of thing before. So what I would do is I, I went back and I kind of rescanned with um, Nmap. So Nmap dash, um, what do I do? A dash A, I guess, dash T4, dash N, dash PN, dash P. And I know the only port that is open is 80, so we'll only scan that. 192.168.0.20. And we'll save that output into Nmap underscore deep scan.txt. So let's let this run just for a second. So I went back and I, did, I ran this scan. Actually, I ran. I think I ran this first. And uh, but I I looked at the scan because a lot of times this stuff will show you. Oh, the you know common name shows up in an SSL cert or something. Kind of gives you maybe you've got Samba going on and it kind of shows you the name of the the host name of the box itself. I don't know what the host name is. I haven't seen any host name information. Maybe that's in the PHP info. I don't remember. But I didn't see any of that. And I thought, wow, I thought this was going to be like a host file thing where you, you know, you edit your Etsy host name file and put that host name in there to the IP. And then things like this stop happening. It goes, oh, now, because what happens is they code in that host name into the code that runs the site. And it's, it's going, I, I don't know what that is. And you're going, I don't either. So you have to put all that information in there. So my first thought was to look there, look for a host name. Didn't see any. So I right click view page source. And of course it's teensy tiny, but now let's look and see if you catch anything. Let's look for some links, right? Because that's going to be grab something. So here's a bunch of links right here, right? Anything with this href business on it is a link. And you'll notice there's WordPress, WP includes CSS. So it's got like, it's going after files in the directory structure. But you'll notice the IP address, 192.168.159.145. So it's not a host name. It definitely ain't the IP address that I put in, right? Because I'm getting DHCP from my little wireless network that I got going on here, right? So what do I do? Well, I guess I could go in and I could, you know, make a DHCP reservation. But in real life land, that wouldn't be possible. I wouldn't be able to do that. This machine would be this machine. And if they hard coded the IP into the thing, I couldn't change that. So that was what was like, oh, those little, this is like my first little twist of the knife in my back by this machine. What do I do? Right? So I started thinking, okay, well, it is, um, it's basically trying to get to this IP address and what's making it take so long. Some of the elements are fine because it's probably just calling the, it's not going full HTTP forward slash IP address. It's just looking to a, um, a local directory and grabbing whatever it needs. So that's why we're getting some of that information, but how do I deal with that? Right? How do I deal with me having to, having to deal with this IP address business? So I thought to myself, can I just forward from one IP to maybe so cat can do that or something like that. Browser time, right? This is where we hit the Google foo, hit the Googles. And I typed in something like, routes 
IP uh, from one IP to our address, I think I did, to another. And then I kept getting a lot of stuff about port forwarding, which is not what I wanted. So I just kind of like said, remove port uh, forwarding. Like so. And from there, it's running very slowly, but we'll get there. Don't worry. I'm, I'm sure it'll... There we go. Come on, computer. Let's see here. It wasn't super easy. It was like a stack exchange. There we go. How to route outgoing traffic from one IP to another. <laughs> so I clicked this little lovely link here. And as we wait for it, come on, you can do it. Let's go. Computer, running so slowly. I think my wireless is pretty horrible. All right, I'll accept the cookies just to get you out of my face. I think this was it. Or was it a stack exchange? No, this looks right. So, don't worry, I will increase, enhance, enhance one more. So these good folks can actually, I'll enhance that a little bit because I want you to be able to see this. So the easiest approach is likely to use IP tables and the NAT function. I went, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Right there, somebody smart. And so this is what I did. So I will copy this and we'll take a look at that here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here I'm going to come over here. There you go. Thank you for working with me, computer. I really appreciate it. Let's clear the screen a little bit. And uh, I'll just paste that in there. So let's take a look at this and see what's going on here. So you've got this. Uh, what was this? I'll be, we've got IP tables. I'll have to sudo this because I am running as a, a standard user. And uh, so we're running IT tables dash T to NAT. So we're going into the NATing function and we append to the output chain. Okay. And then we're going to do a dash D for the destination IP. So I need to go in here and change this. What is it? Uh, oh man, let's just use my arrows. I forget the it's alt something to go forward. Uh, there we go. Old IP. I'm just trying to find it there. And I'm going to put the old IP. So the old IP is 192.168. Was it 159.145? Oops, 145. We can verify that by going back to here. 159.145. Perfect. All right. And then, of course, dash P. Uh, that's the protocol, is TCP, which it is. Uh, dash dash D port, which is the destination port. So we need to change this to, from saying some port to port 80 because it is on port 80. And then it's going to jump. To DNAT, that's the output chain, or the, yeah, right? Yeah, that's the, um, well, what you want it to do, right? Well, once it jumps, once you actually hit this rule, what should it do? It's going to go to the, the dynamic NAT. And then to destination is our command, and we just got to give it the IP, which is going to be 192.168.0.20. I think that is all I need. Hit uh, that, put the old password in. Bada bing, should be good to go. Uh, you can always do sudo IP tables dash L, right? To list, but it's only showing the, the standard stuff. So whatever, it's there because it didn't complain, right? That's how you know. <laughs> you, trust me, you get that wrong, it'll yell at you real good and say, you are dumb. Why are you putting that dumb stuff in me? I don't like dumb. Do it right next time. Right. And he's like, yes, sir, I will, I promise. All right. Um, okay, so now that that's in there, let's test that functionality by going back here and refreshing the page. And hey, look, things are working. I'm like, yay, that's how it's supposed to go. So um, yeah, there's that, that's fun. So now that I have that capability, now that things will work correctly, I can use the actual IP that this thing has and not the hard-coded one in the you know, that whoever put that in the, in the code for this WordPress site. All right, now that we know that WordPress is here, of course, what do I wanna do? I wanna scan the thing. I wanna get the scan going. So I'm actually gonna clear that box out so we can kind of get more of a full screen thing. And we're gonna do some WP scanning. WP scan dash U for URL, and that's HTTP colon bang bang 102.168.0.20 forward slash WordPress. And then you're going to do, um, what is it, uh, dash E for enumerates. And I think by default it does 
all things, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember. Maybe it's got like a subset of all things, but that's fine. Uh, and then this was fun for me because I, I had been a while since I've had to actually had to run WP scan and now you require an API key for it to really do anything worthwhile. So I had to get myself a login and API key. If you haven't done that, I'm going to put that in here. You do dash dash API dash token like that. And then you pop your API token in there. Now I'm going to take the screen off for a second here so that I can do that. And you nasty people out there can't see my stuff. You don't you need my API key. They're free. Go get one of your own. So um, let me just um, grab that and I'll paste it in and fire off the scan. So let me see here. Uh, oh, LS home. What is it called? Oh yeah. Cats slash WP scan API key. There we go. Almost done. Almost there. Almost at the station. Copy and paste. And I can close this. There we go. Now I'm going to fire it off. And once that kind of didn't like my dash U, maybe it's dash dash URL. One moment, please. One moment. Thank you for your patience. We here at Daniel's Cybersecurity Show and appreciate your patience. And yes, now it is scanning. Just waiting for it to kind of scroll my API key off the screen, which should just be momentarily. Again, do thank you. Okay, there it goes. I know you bash it contribute your screen. So there you go. You're seeing the output of the scan. It's rocking and rolling. Obviously, it's already found one vulnerability has been identified. And um, yeah, it's kind of going past that. I'll, I'll, I'll keep it scrolled here. Maybe it won't continue to scroll away. But it's saying that it's got this WordPress 3.7 to 5.7.1 object injection in PHP Mailer. And then here are all the references, WordPress scan. So this was fun, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just let you know, here's where I spent a hot minute playing around with this. This is what I like to call a rabbit hole, right? Or a rabbit trail. However, you might have heard it. A squirrel moment, something that a canard, a red herring. It's meant to knock you off the trail of the actual thing you should be doing. I say that though, but there was something about this that made me think about what I should do next. So what I found out about this, I, I really ran down a lot of this stuff. I watched, uh, there was even an IPSEC video. If you um, I'll go back, if you look at this right here, I followed it. I watched that video. It was IPSEC. Super awesome. Check out his channel. If uh, you want to watch somebody do a bunch of awesome CTF stuff, um, talk about this vulnerability. And it was, let me, let me just go ahead and like grab one of them here. Cause I can't remember exactly what the name of it was. So I'm just going to kind of like highlight this copy address. Let's go here, fire that off in a new tab, paste and go. And, um, it was an interesting, is it not coming? I said go. Didn't, doesn't, there it goes. I guess it's moving. Man, my Wi Fi. I gotta, I gotta speed that up. I might be on the wrong one. Oh, well. <laughs> anyway, here we go. It's talking about this thing here. So I, I started following this rabbit hole about what this is and what this does, this PHP mailer, this um, PHP object injection. And from there, I'm like, I'm Google searching, okay, PHP object injection, vul injection, vulnerability, right? I'm starting to look at stuff. Okay, what's this? And um, this got this cheat sheet, materials reinforced. And of course, this over here has all these things. And it made me, it, as I read about it, I actually think maybe even, let's finish looking at our scan. You can see that nothing was really found. Oh, one, one good thing was found. One user was identified, Zhang, and it's admin. Who would knew, right? It's not always admin, but now I know for a fact it's admin. So it's good, good news there. I've got a username, most likely going out on a limb here. It's the administrator of the WordPress site. Could be, never know, right? I'm just, it's a guess. Uh, I'm being facetious. But it made me think, uh, so all the, I digress, all the information I was reading about the the vulnerability there was telling me that you had to be authenticated, right? That it was, it was an authenticated type of attack. And I was like, well, I can't run that because 
I'm not authenticated. I don't have a login. Maybe I can log in. Maybe, maybe that's what I need to do. Maybe I need to log in and that's how I'm going to get to the end. But I'm like, I, I know that if I can get into the admin as the admin to the WordPress site, then I'm going to be able to, to get shell access to the box. Cause I know how to do that in WordPress sites, which we'll see here in just a second. So what did I do? Well, going back to the full screen. So you don't see my API key. I'm going to, well, how about that? That's fun to know. I didn't know that did that. I do now. Uh, what, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually, um, actually, I don't think I need my API key. I don't. So we will we'll go back. I'll give you guys the, all the fun. All right, go back to the computer screen. There we go. Uh, I'm going to run a brute force with WP scan. I guess that's so I guess it's dash U for admin and then dash P for the password file I want to use, which guess what that is? User, user, share. I am a horrible typer. Uh, share word lists, rock you dot text. That's right. I know it's the biggest one in the, you know, as far as like, Word word files or word dictionary files that I have in my calling box, and it can't take a hot minute to get through. But I figured, what the heck? I'll give it ten to twenty minutes and see what it does. So there's that. I think that's all I need. Fire and forget. Here we go. So now it's going to kind of run through some of the same things we saw before, except it's not going to find that vulnerability because I don't have the API key in. Interesting fact about the API key: you only get twenty five scans per day with a free API key for WP scams, just FYI. But now I'm in the middle of a full on password attack, right? Performing password attack on XMLRC against one user. So this is going to take a minute. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pause the video here for just a second. And when it's done, we'll come back and uh, we'll see what we find. It should just be a, a couple of minutes. So I'm just gonna pause. Well, it's done. Let's take a look at what we've got going on here. It took a minute, but uh, we, we we persevered. We made it through. And check it out. There it is. Valid combinations found. Username, admin, and password. i be honest with you. The first time I saw this, when it actually, like, jumped and said, found the password, I was like, oh, well, how about that? I did not expect it to be that way. I thought, I'm missing something. There's going to be something in the tools or whatever. And I don't think we actually ever did look in there, right? No, no. Yeah. I'm sorry. We did. We did. We found that PHP info file. Um, yeah, your time can get away from you. So, uh, there it is. So now we have a, a username and password that seemingly is valid. Now we all we got to do is try to log into it. Where do we go to do that? Well, it's the WP dash admin page. If I'm not mistaken, let's go back to our web application here. Where is that? Here we go. And just go to forward slash WordPress forward slash WP dash admin, I think. Yep, there it is. And control plus. All right, so we're gonna type in, yep, admin, and then the password was Adam 14. And wait for it. Hey, hey, there we go. We've got ourselves a lovely login to as admin. Great. So at this point I was like, okay, I'm logged in as admin. There's nothing stopping me from doing what I normally do when I gain access to WordPress sites as admin. Let me just try and see if that's what I should be doing. So what I normally do is I come over here to the appearance and I go to, hello, work with me. I go to themes and no, I'm sorry. Right now I go to customize. That's it. I'm so sorry. Losing my mind. I'm I'm totally losing my mind. This is not where I go. <laughs> go back. Go back. Crazy person. Where do I what do I do? Theme editor. That's what it is. The theme. Man, your brain sometimes just does not work with you on a regular day-to-day -day basis. It says, Oh, you appear to be making direct edits to the themes in WordPress dashboard. We recommend that you don't. Well, I really appreciate that you recommend that, but I completely understand what I'm doing because I'm trying to hack this site, man. Don't try to tell me what to do. All right. So um, what I did was, and I guess I could have used this theme, but I just kind of used the, I did the drop down and went to 2019 theme. Hit select. And usually what I do is I look to see if I can edit the 404 page template because it's a pretty innocuous file 
to mess around with and just to test to whether or not, because sometimes you can't, right? Um, if you can't, move on to another one and see if you can edit that one. Uh, and I'll just kind of type in some stuff and hit update file. It does say file edited successfully. And great, that, that means I have the ability to update this file. You'll notice right around, oh, I don't know, this area, it's a PHP file right there, PHP. If I put some PHP code in there, guess what happens if you browse to this page? It's going to execute PHP. So at this point, this is where I'm just like, rock, it's gonna be fun. Uh, let's see here. What I'm gonna do is, let's come back over here, clear the screen, and somewhere around here I have, it's either in my documents or it's in the tools. Let's go into tools. I don't have a tools directory? Okay, that's fine. Be that way. Um, oh, forward slash, uh, I gotta do my home directory tools. There we go. And I've got this, this is the, um, what is it? Um, monkey, what am I thinking monkey? Why, why is, I've, I've lost my mind. Uh, pen tester monkey, pen test monkey, that's it. Pen test monkey has a bunch of reverse shells on their website, right? You can go there, check it out. Go to pen test monkey. Just Google search that pen test monkey rev shells. And it's probably going to give you that page. And uh, so if you don't have this, go grab it. Man, this thing is running so slow today. It's so bothersome. Uh, there you go. Reverse shell cheat sheet by pen test monkey. Get all up in this business. Cause there's a lot of really good like reverse shells using a variety of different methods. Um, let's see what we got here. We've got a bash. We've got a Perl one. We've got a Python one and oh look PHP. So grab that slaps all in there and, uh, go to town. So I'm just going to kind of copy that. So I will cat monkey bam. And then I'm just going to highlight this whole thing. Don't go too far. Don't go too far. There we go. So just highlight this copy. Take it to the river, put it in the water. Where's my theme editor? There it is. So now I'm just gonna highlight, select a, or control A, this whole thing, and then just right click and paste. So now that's in there. Just gotta make a couple of adjustments, I think. I might've already put my IP in there. I use, I usually use a port that's probably gonna get allowed. Um, so that's 443 on this one. That's fine. I think my IP address is, is that. Let's see here. Clear IP adder. Yep. Bam. So that should be good. So all I need to do now is, is netcat dash nvlp on port 443. And of course, I need to sudo that. There we go. Put in the password. Oh, I don't have an netcat. Uh, I must have used nc. There we go. Now it's listening. Excelente. Back to our page here. Update the file. File updated successfully. And then I was like, oh, where is that 404 page at for 2019 theme? Hey, that's what we got Google for. Hello. Oh, I'm on Google. I'm dumb. Let's see here. I want the, um, let's see, your WordPress uh, 2019. 404 path. That's what I want. How to add my own user. Maybe this will help me. Oh, no, that looks good. Oh, this is WordPress.org. So, but look, what's this? This is probably what I'm looking for. So, this one says WP content themes forward slash 2019 404 page. How do I add my own 404 page? That's funny. It's, I don't see it in here. But it was right there at the top of the list uh, or in that, that right there. Bam. WP dash content forward slash themes forward slash 2019 forward slash 404 dot PHP. All right. WP content. Let's do that. So let's go here. I'll take off the view source. Jiminy Glickets here and WP dash content forward slash, I guess you guys would like to see that. 
That way you can see it. WP content forward slash, um, I think it was themes forward slash 2019 forward slash 404.php. Hit enter. Let's go over to this thing here and see if we caught anything on our listener. Uh, yes. Oh my goodness. Look at that right there. I'm logged in. I do a host name, WP. There you go. Hey, how about that? We have made shell access into this box. We are having some fun now, right? So now it's time to start the old privilege escalation path and do all the fun stuff that's there. Okay, so where am I uh, would probably be a good idea. So PWD, I'm in the root. Yeah, I do an LS. Oh, I do not like this. Uh, clear term variable now. So, okay, how well, would we do Python 3-C uh, import PTY col or semicolon PTY dot spawn and give the old bin bash, finish it out. And let's see if we can clear out now. No, it's a term and variable not sent. Okay, whatever. So apparently there's some jankiness going on. I'm not going to worry about fixing the terminal. I'm just going to clear it out, but this will work just fine. Um, so I'm in the roots. So one of the things I like to do, look for users, right? So you can like grep for uh, bash from slash Etsy password, see who's got one. We've got WP admin has a bash shell. And of course, root does. You might want to check for other shells because not everybody uses the same shell or just look at the Etsy password file and see what's up. Do maybe a dash V grep for um, like no login. As if you do a cat slash Etsy password like that, you'll see that you got like no login. You've got false. These are for things that are like service accounts and stuff that don't have normal logins. So if you wanted to get everything except those things, you would do like grep dash V no login, no login like that. And then pipe that back to grep dash V for false and say Etsy slash. Oh, helps if I do this slash Etsy. I think this will work password and then pipe that to grep again, dash V for false. Yeah, there you go. And you notice I get the same kind of output, but also get this one that has that sync because it wasn't those two things. So it's it's saying, find me the things that aren't this. And then you give it that. That's what the dash V does. All right. So now that I know WP admin is our user for the box other than root, I'm going to go to slash home slash, oop, slash home slash WP admin. Do an LS dash AL because you always want to do that. Got a local dot text file right there, but I got read only privileges for WP admin. Everything else is like blocked out, right? So if I did, um, or I'm sorry, cat local dot text, you notice I get a permissions denied. So I need to be WP admin to do that. Long story short, I did things like suit GUID. Um, I tried doing things like, uh, well, oh, you know what? I do have a password. Right, I have the password for the WordPress site, which was the admin of the WordPress site, which was Adam14. You don't suppose. They wouldn't be dumb enough in a million years to reuse a password, would they? Well, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's worth looking. You never know, right? So I'm going to do an SU for WP admin and type in Adam, ad, uh, Adam14. Oh, look at that. Password reuse is a security no-no. Don't do that. Okay. And this is why, right? I'm, I'm being, I'm, I'm having a little fun with it, but in all seriousness, don't do this kind of stuff in real life. Unfortunately, people do this kind of stuff in real life. I, I, I know it's easy. Trust me. I get it, but it's just not worth it. As you can see. All right. That said, now that we've got some stuff, actually I can um, ls-al, and now I can cat local.txt. Booyah, got the file, having fun. One flag down, one to go. All right, so again, back to the drawing board. Well, I'm trying to get root, right? I want to get up into that root, so 
you know, the whole you name dash a thing kind of comes into play looking for exploits there came up with Zilcho. Um, then I thought, you know, let me kick around a little bit and, um, the WordPress area, because I do know a few things about that. There might be a configuration file with some credentials in there. WordPress does usually have some sort of MySQL MariaDB backend kind of thing going on. Maybe there's some creds in there. So let's run over to var slash www.html slash WordPress. Oh, permission denied. Well, that's fun. Is it really? Okay. <laughs> that's an interesting thing. Um, let's do this. Uh, let's go back out. Now I'm www data. And now I can go to cd slash var slash www.html slash WordPress because I own that as www data. So that's good. I didn't have that problem last time. Maybe I just did this the opposite way when I originally did this. So now I do an LS and I start looking at files, right? I've got a readme. I've got this WP activate. There's the WP admin page, blog header, comments, post config sample, WP config, WP, WP config, WP config. There's config file, right? So, all right, cat uh, WP slash config dot PHP. And let's see what we got here right out of the gate. Look what we have. DB name, WordPress, DB user, admin, DB password. Yes, say it with me, folks. WP admin, pound one, two, three. Do the old copy Because, hey, guess what? We now have the MySQL password. All right, let's go. And uh, we also have the login account. So admin. So I should be able to log in using this. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to have Road to the Mountain Top, right? Um, so I guess what I'm going to look for is MySQL-U as admin-p. And then when it prompts me, paste it in. And I have access to this. So show databases. And there's the WordPress database. And I can use WordPress. And then show tables. And then if I wanted to, I could... Uh, select star from WP underscore users. Uh, oh, forgot my semicolon. And I get the admin password, which guess what? I already got. I got two of them, right? So that's that's not going to work for me. Good, sir. Uh, so what am I going to do? I'm going to exit out of this. Now I'm going to um, C slash home slash WP admin again. And I'm going to SU back as WP admin. And this is where I was like, okay, I'm looking for, I want to get to root. That's nice. I could read the database there, but it doesn't really help me. So I got to put my password, Adam 14. So one of the other things I do right out of the gate, usually when I'm looking for privesk and Linux is uh, sudo dash L and Hey, we got a sudo right there. And guess what? It runs in the context of what is that? Oh, what is that again? Root, that's right. And hey, look, running MySQL with username root. And then we're gonna open the WordPress database and it's gonna prompt me for a password. What did we just get? We got the password, right? So let me, I think I still have that pasted in here. Let me just paste and make sure. Yeah, it's still in the clipboard. So let's copy that, let's do that. Um, so I'll do sudo dash, um, oh, I'll just do MySQL. All right, or do I have to do sudo? No, it just does it. All right, my SQL dash u root dash d WordPress press and then dash p. Pop that in there. Enter the old password, pasting it in. I'm in now that I'm in under not as WP admin but as root. We just sudoed into this as root. Guess what? You can run system commands from inside of MySQL and MariaDB databases. Fun. Let's do that, shall we? Let's have a good time. To do that, you just do a backslash exclamation point and then whatever you want to run. I'm going to run bin bash. Uh, oh, look, ID. What am I? I'm root. Yay. We made it. Everybody cheer. We're having a good time. So I'm root now. Um, I can also do a... Um, who am I? Shows me I'm root. Slash cd to the root directory. And look at that. There's a proof.txt file. I can cat proof.txt. 
all day long. I got the flag. We've had some fun. Oh my goodness. I do love hacking some boxes. Hopefully you did too. Uh, so it's a really good one. Actually, I thought it was very straightforward. Couple of little minor twists and turns. This would be uh, a really nice box for you to like check your skills against uh, and have some fun doing it. Cause I, I, I like boxes that are straightforward. These real world kind of stuff, not so much a, a puzzle. We had that one little twist there with the having to route the IP using the, the natting function of IP tables. But other than that, really good box. I had a good time walking my way through it. Hopefully you did. But that's all I got for you good folks today. Uh, I'll have more next Friday, hopefully, if the uh, world turns in my favor. And uh, until then, thanks for watching. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, share, and like. And please, as always, comment. What did you like about this? Did you have a good time? Did you hate it? Did you think it was dumb? Did you think, oh, that's the coolest thing? I learned something neat. Share that with your friends that are learning this as well. You know, that's what it's all about. The more conversation that we get going, that conversation tends to be a great learning environment. So I want to learn from you good folks. Hopefully you're here learning from me. We're all learning from each other. We're having fun. That's what it's all about. So please put something in the comments that's going to lend to the conversation. Until then, next time, thanks for watching and we'll see you.